Hi there. My name is Sue Klaus. I live in America, the United States of America. I live in Illinois. And I'm your sister. No matter where you are on this planet, I'm your sister. I started thinking about this when I saw a website, which I'll put on the screen later. It's by the Quakers. And it's a listing first of places that have brewing problems that could get hot and places that have hot conflicts right now, or at least from January through June of 2006. And there's an awful lot of war going on. You only see a little bit about some of these, but there's an awful lot of war going on. And even where you don't see a little marker on the map I'll put up, there's probably a conflict. I guess if you're human, you'll disagree with someone. If you're human, you may have a conflict with someone. If you're human, you might have a war with someone. And I hate to think that part of being human is making war. But then I started to think again, always a dangerous thing for me, have we ever had a time really without any war? Probably not. Even if there was a period of time with no major war, there probably were some minor ones. Then I found some more websites about peace. You know peace. Peace. You know peace. You remember peace. You've probably marched for peace, or maybe you've written a letter about peace, or maybe you don't think about it much because you think it's impossible. Now, that is very likely, that you think it's impossible that peace is impossible. And that would mean that people who work toward peace or uh, fight for peace, I know that sounds absurd, but fight for peace, might seem like fools. But I don't think of Gandhi as a fool, and I don't think of Martin Luther King as a fool, I don't think of Jesus Christ as a fool. Uh, all these people wanted peace. Maybe one of the problems is that maybe some of us don't have peace in our own lives. And if you don't have peace there, you can't make peace with anyone else. If you're fighting with spouses or parents or children, siblings, friends, co-workers, there's n not a very high probability that you'll be able to make peace on a global scale. But, there we go with the impossible thing again. Is it really impossible? Or could we have peace? The lists I'm going to show you, there are all sorts of conflicts all over the world. Some are about freedom, some are about money, some are about religion, some are about power. I think some are about food. Yeah. And I know that if you're in another country besides the U.S., or even if you're in the United States, you might look at me and say, well, what's she complaining about? She's got everything. And I have to tell you, yeah, I have a lot. I have a lot of advantages. I have a job. I can go out my front door without a chance of being blown up tomorrow, I think, and I have a roof over my head, and food, I have food, you can probably tell I have food. I have a family that loves me, I have friends who care about me. 
I'm very rich because I have a family that loves me and friends who care about me. I'm very rich that way. And I also have a roof over my head, which makes me richer than a lot of people on this planet. And I know that. And that might make this appeal seem rather shallow. And I understand that too. And I understand that me talking to someone in China when I ask, is there any way you can let go of the Tibet thing, uh, that might seem pretty shallow to you. I might seem shallow to ask my own country to get over some things too. Let me say this about that. I believe you can be a patriot and still not like your government and still love your country. I didn't vote for the current administration. I know that doesn't say a heck of a lot, but right now it's all I've got. But I was able to vote. And that makes me very rich too, because in some countries... Number one, people either can't vote or women can't vote. And I can vote and I can work and I can drive a car all by myself and I don't have to wear stuff to hide my hair or anything. I can do all that stuff. I, I consider that some freedom. I can go to my church and I know a lot of people can't go to theirs. I can just go to the store and get food, and I know a lot of people can't do that either. I have the luxury of maybe growing a couple tomatoes this year, but I know that there are plenty of people that if, if they don't grow crops this year, they will die. I know that too. But I'm still your sister. I'm one of your sisters and brothers in the United States. I care about you. That might seem odd, but I care about you. I care about us. I don't think anyone that is innocent should die needlessly. I don't think anyone should be tortured. I don't want war anymore. Any kind of war. Skirmishes, battles. I'm asking you this as a personal favor. To consider peace. Small word. It's a small word. But it's really huge. And I'm asking you as your sister to consider it. Just think about it once in a while. Is it possible? I don't know. It is impossible if no one thinks about it. It is impossible if no one acts on it. 